Hello. Let me grab the clicker. Push him back a little bit. Um, should I start? I just want to thank um, Dr. Tracy and Chad and Edward Northwell and Feinstein for having me here and for wanting to listen to my story. Um, I'll just tell you something, a little bit about myself that um, wasn't shown in the video. Um, so again, 2020, I was living in Manhattan, living life, living, um, I think it was actually my first job out of college was right across the street from here. So I've been living independently in the city for about 20 years. And, um, you know, I walk to work, I bike to work, I walk home from work every day. I live by myself every day. I live, you know, it was seamless. Um, one morning in the summer, it was like right in the middle of COVID, I went out to Montauk and like that in a moment, in a blink of an eye, my um, life changed and I was paralyzed and from the neck down and I was taken to the hospital where I ended up staying for like eight months. Um, so I left my apartment, it was sunny. I went back to my childhood home and it was snowing and I was depressed and sad and you know, I didn't want to leave my house. And I was very uncertain about the future. And then uh, we finally got a car because my doctor said it wasn't doing home visits anymore. And um, he's like, you have to meet this guy, Chad, who I met like a week later. We got along great. Um, we spoke, <laughs> my dad and my uncle came, and we just had to move forward with the clinical trial. I checked all the boxes, which is apparently hard to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I managed to do that, and um, right then and there, I changed my outlook on living and the way I looked at life and what I did and what I will do. For the past two years now, two years. almost three, yes. I've been visiting Chad and his wonderful team for about um, two months now, um, for about two days a week. Two days a week. So it's long, stressful, tiring, but it's <laughs> motivated and it's given me hope that this is actually is going to help me out. And, and to be honest, before that, I never even left my house. So it was good to like get out and see people other than my family. I picked up an aide who's sitting right over there. Um, he's been with me for two years now. We're like best friends. So um, it's been great. Um, great talking with Chad and meeting his team. I've been in the finance world, so Getting to see scientists at work is totally new to me. I didn't even know what BCI was before this, or AI technology had something to do with like um, with medical field. We just introduced that like in the finance world. So I was like, how are they going to do that in medical field? Like implement AI and like all that stuff and. Chad's group does it pretty good. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I really like, for the first year, I was like, oh, this is so boring. I just sat there and looked at the computer screen, watch your hand move, tried to make my hand move, pull my hand up, pull my hand down. And I was like, what am I doing? This is so boring. But I didn't realize they were mapping my brain now. And it took a while, huh? Yes. And two MRIs later, and I was, it was, um, I went for the surgery, and I was like, shit, all these people are here for me. <clears throat> about, 40, about 40 40 people. people. It was like 
15 hours long too. Yep. So it was, um, so up until then I had no idea. Like I was like, hey, I'm just coming here to hang out. And then when I first day back, went back to the lab, they hooked me up to like a computer and I was thinking and what I was thinking was happening on the screen then, and it was just mind-blowing. I was, thought I was in a movie or something. I was like, what's going on? And then we brought somebody in. He put on the sleeve, and I was thinking, and his hand was moving on what I was thinking. So I was like, ooh. So like, close your fist, open your fist. And I kept on doing it so fast, because I was so amazed it worked. And it was like, whoa. And the guy was in so much pain, right? It was one of our med students. So, you know, we, we make him do these kinds of things. And Keith had pro, full control over his arm. It was opening I think and closing his arm. a little dramatic, too. <laughs> he was sore. His facial sore. expressions were funny. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was an awesome experience to see mm -hmm. that. And the way they explained it to me and what was going to happen and what they were looking to do it was very innovating. This guy you can't ask for much more. Every week I come in there, every week there's a new task or something new or something that didn't work the week before. So I'm very grateful for you, Chad, and hopefully, and the people at Northwell, and hopefully next year I'll be able to come back here and maybe uh, shake um, Chad's hand or give him a hug or something. <laughs> Throw my football, and my arms will work. Because, you know, when you hear about quadriplegics, you always hear about, like, oh, I want to walk right away, and all I want to do is just use my hands and wipe me tears away and, you know, just do normal, like, little things, like brush my teeth, stuff like that. So we're working close to that, right, Chad? Absolutely. Very small steps, but we are, we're getting there. So it's been a wonderful experience with him and his team and the people at Northwell. So good job. So now my turn. <laughs> uh, when I met Keith uh, two, yeah, two and a half years ago, almost, um, three. almost three years ago, um, I knew he was the one. That's funny. Don't, don't tell my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, how did you know? The one. And I had said that, and it's funny that Kevin had talked about it starts with patient number one in these studies. Um, and, but we knew, we knew because Keith had uh, three characteristics. Uh, determination, uh, bravery to try something that had never been done before, um, and selflessness. Uh, we were very clear with Keith that this may or may not work. Uh, maybe we'll learn the science and this will help somebody down the road, but it may not help you. And, and luckily, it's starting to work. Uh, but we felt like Keith had the right, uh, the right stuff. Um, so I just, I just want to thank you, Keith, uh, for you know taking uh, the keep, chance, that keep you on your toes, and, ke and keeping us on our toes every single week uh, for all the hard work. It is hard. It's four to five hours, literally, each session. And Keith does not want to take a break. He keeps going. Uh, it's tremendous. Just one drink water. <laughs> And, and so, and just, uh, you know, it's a huge team, as Keith talked about. And I wanted to thank the team, uh, our neurosurgeons, our neuroscientists, our engineers, uh, the entire team, our entire clinical team. Uh, it's really amazing. Um, and I want to say just a couple things about the technology. What you see, it'll sound like science fiction, but these are two ports into Keith's brain. There are five chips in his motor and sensory areas. And these, with these ports, we can see into his brain, record signals, they're like windows in, and we can also stimulate, so we can read and write, literally, into Keith's brain. And with these windows, uh, we're gaining tremendous insight into how the brain and the spinal cord actually work together, uh, and how they can even 
work to heal together. And so, you know, the final comment I want to make is that uh, it's been an incredible day, um, and I think that's kind of the theme, really, is uh, us all working together um, to advance medicine. Um, and if we do it in the right way and we use uh, AI and literally brain technology, um, I think we can really tackle some of the toughest medical challenges on the planet. Uh, and the last word is that Keith is showing us all that it's possible. So here's to Keith.